And welcome to the 72 PC podcast, the only podcast where you can join the conversation in the game. Yo. With us this week, we have Eric. He's back. Hey. Welcome. 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 Why does I welcome myself? Hey. Welcome. <laughs> it's so, good to uh, have you back. So guys, guys what? I hate to interrupt right at the oh, start. That's fine. But we can't queue up just yet. Because I have some food here that I've been saving. I was going to do it last week, but Irk was gone, and I needed them here. Oh. I've got some sunflower oh. seeds, but they're not just any sunflower seeds. These are Taco Bell Taco Supreme <laughs> flavored sunflower <laughs> seeds that I was going to try right here on the cast. I, uh, those are probably I wasn't prepared for this. I thought those were going to be ranch ones. Nope. Now, You've let's got see. Taco Bell? Taco Bell. Sunflower seeds. Yeah. All right. Yes. Can we? He's spitting it. Oh, I mean, I guess technically you always spit. You're supposed to seeds, kind but... of spit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's not the worst thing I've tasted, but it... have you ever had like, uh, like the taco flavored chips or Pringles? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Well, not yeah, the Pringles. Like, I've had kind of, kind of the taco dust on them. Yeah. Taco dust. Yeah, I'm familiar with taco dust. Uh, you know, it's it's not terrible. I wouldn't go out of my way to get these, but honestly, I was expecting something a whole lot worse. I might actually eat them. Oh, are they by David? <laughs> oh, oh, you bought them ex uh, just expecting to hate it. Yeah, exactly. Like, we saw oh, this, okay. and we're like, well, what the fuck? This is so weird. This is going to be awful. So we bought it, uh, because that's what we do. Oh, dude, I'm uh, the same yeah. way. Yeah. If, uh, if you ever need some taco-flavored sunflower seeds, I guess uh, this will do it. Okay. Big's got you covered. So yep. there, there are a lot of things that I understand as far as flavoring goes. Like, but taco sunflower seeds, that isn't one of them. And yeah, there was also, never, uh, go ahead. Well, there was also, the, another one is cotton candy flavored grapes. Like actual grapes, cotton candy. I don't understand that I can, either. I can kind of get that one. I don't know. Um, because to me, it's it's still a sweeter flavor. I can kind of maybe roll with it. Like you get some fruity flavor cotton candy, right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it fits. Sunflower seeds, I think just salty. Like even the barbecue ones, I'm not a big fan of. Like I just think give me fucking salt on a sunflower seed. That's all I want. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I'm sure the ranch ones so. are good. I haven't had the ranch ones, but I've seen them in the store. Here, here I am talking on mute. I think there's a time and a place for sunflower seeds, right? Like, it's it's not really taking the place of chips for me. Like, if I want chips, there's a, a very certain dynamic. But for sunflower seeds, it's like I'm working outside, spitting the shells everywhere, or I'm at a baseball game. Like, I eat sunflower seeds like I would eat, like, fully shelled peanuts. That's kind of where they fit for me. The only time I, I ever eat fully shelled peanuts is when I'm at whatever restaurant that is that has them in buckets <laughs> around everywhere <laughs> with everything on the floor. Yeah. yeah. So I don't remember when or why, but I had a, sun, a small sunflower kick and it got to the point where I was able to do the pouch them on your right, crack them, store it on the left. Yep. It takes skill. I was, I was able to get <sighs> to that point. And then nice. I realized, dude, why am I doing this? It's a lot of work. <laughs> this, you can buy them without the shell <laughs> you see i i actually kind of don't mind that though because i uh the server is garbage oh my god i'm lagging so bad anyway um oh no it's just me thanks comcast uh anyway um with the shell it prevents me from eating like an entire bag of sunflower seeds in like an hour right yeah yeah because those things are calorically dense like you can eat a lot yes, of calories are. of stuff any kind of nut like that or seed, I guess. Yeah. So um, I used to, when I was a kid, like I, I had a development on how I ate sunflower seeds. Started as a kid that as, um, I would just like put them in my mouth, get all the salt off and then spit them out. Yeah. <laughs> like I wouldn't crash I the shell, do I wouldn't do anything. Too. And then I realized about eating them. So my next solution was eat it all, like all of it, <laughs> not just the inside, literally the shell and everything. <laughs> I was gonna say then, real men eat the shells too. No, that was a real kid, a real dumb kid. <laughs> that's just that's asking for digestive issues. Yeah. Really. And then finally I learned like an adult innate 
sunflower seeds the right way. I just I don't so, know. Yeah. I can't remember the last time I had a sunflower seed. It's been years. I know I haven't had a single one since I've been in Seattle. I like the the like de shelled ones, right? Like yeah. While I appreciate the shell for slowing me down, sometimes I just want like a fistful of salt. <laughs> and eating and just a that, fistful of salt is not socially acceptable. So you want a vessel for that shalt? Shalt? Yeah. You shalt. want a vessel for that. You want shalt. a vessel yeah. for the shalt. I mean, just, like, just like you wouldn't eat ketchup with a spoon, but like having a bottle of ketchup Some with three French would. fries is somehow socially acceptable. <laughs> no, no, no. If you, when you got a ketchup fix and you need a vessel, like Lay's Ruffles. Or really wavy potato chips and ketchup. I can never get into that. Like, I know it's a oh, super yeah. common thing, but potato chips and ketchup just never worked with me. And I don't know why. I, it's the it's same not, damn thing, but a different shape. I don't think it's too common in America. Like, Canada, they have ketchup flavored chips. Yeah. Like, barbecue and ketchup. But yeah, I, I grew up with a very strong ketchup family. So that happened. I'm not a. I mean, I like ketchup, okay, on fries and stuff, but I, I don't know. I'm not crazy about it. Like, I never ever buy it. Like, I never have any at my house for any reason. Oh, dude, I always have ketchup. But it's then again, uh, typically time. a tragedy if we run out of ketchup. <laughs> like, it's a national emergency. We're actually putting in a grocery order tonight, mostly because the bottle of ketchup it's empty. And ketchup is actually one of the few things where, like, I have a very strict on where it's. You get fucking Heinz. Nothing else. Oh, yeah. Like Hunts is garbage. <laughs> Fuck your Hunts shit. Hunt, if Hunts I go to a bad. restaurant and they've got Hunts, like, okay, if you're skipping on ketchup, what else are you fucking skipping on, man? <laughs> like, that just shows me you don't give a shit about quality. I like, like, I, I I like when a restaurant actually makes their own ketchup in-house. I think that's It's cool. never good, though. Like, okay. I've never I, had I, good homemade I ketchup. Have. I've got a funny story about that. So we had a really picky eater on my team when I used to work in Columbus. And there was this really trendy ch uh, sandwich shop. Like, not a sandwich, restaurant, really. And we would always go there and get, like, their chicken sandwich and stuff. So it was our first time there. He gets his sandwich, takes it off, just grabs a ketchup that is not in a standard bottom container, and just douses his sandwich in ketchup. It was fennel-based ketchup. Ruined oh, his entire no. sandwich. Oh, that's the worst. You gotta test that stuff, man. You can't just eat. Well, we, and it's funny because eat. it made, <laughs> you it made can't such an impression. Eat. Made such an impression. The next time we went there, he wasn't there, and we ordered him something to bring back to the office. <laughs> they brought out two things of ketchup just to fuck with him and let <laughs> us take the ketchup back with the sandwich. <laughs> that is great. Uh, but yeah, okay. So um, I want yeah, to touch on this. One... I forget. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, um, I don't know how much you guys, I actually didn't get to listen to last week. So I don't know how much you guys discussed about where I was, what I was doing. Um, Nothing. So I, I had to fly back across to Ohio. So during pandemic, I had to fly to Ohio. That's a bad, well, bad timing. Yes. Come to find out that in actuality, outside of the pandemic part of it, it is the perfect timing to be flying <laughs> right dude like tsa man i was through the seattle tsa in like five minutes the plane um i had the rows the way they do it is one person per row like per half per row unless Ooh. you bought tickets together then you can sit together so every time i was by myself and the way they stagger the seating there's no one behind you so if you want to recline which PSA, if you recline on a full plane, you're a piece of shit. Um, Agreed. Fuck you if you recline. Uh, but yeah, you can do this on that because there's no one behind you. It's fucking yeah. great. Fucking love it. Um, bad thing was that uh, there was no restaurants open in the airport. Like, there was a couple. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, that was really, really interesting. And hey. come to find out my camera was off. Sorry, fellas. <laughs> It's but funny yeah, because so like, your camera being off also messes with the ordering of where you guys are in the Discord call. So now, so I'm Tom's an Eric. Yeah, Tom's hi Eric. guys. Tom, fix your stupid I hate camera. Storylines in games. <laughs> oh, fuck you. I'm emotionally but, um, unaffected by them. <laughs> so when I got 
so when I got to Seattle, <laughs> um, I've, I kind of saw the writing on the wall. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to buy a big ass shareable size of peanut butter M&Ms and a Mountain Dew. Cause I don't know. Come yeah. to find out, I get to Detroit. All the restaurants are closed Detroit. except for two. And they had like hour long waits to get in to get food. Oh, Jesus. So I'm like, fuck that noise. So that part sucks. Bring your own food. Other than that, flying right now is pretty nice. So uh, I actually, I've, I've got another food story. So uh, you guys will probably know where this is going real, real fucking quick. So uh, the last Not time I had Panda Express, I was 16 years old. Panda. I was in Arizona, oh. and it was one of the worst Chinese food. Panda if you Express even call it that. sucks. I don't care. I it's, had it recently. It sucks. It's the fucking worst. <laughs> so, um, but we've we've had this thing. Like, it's always there. It's always on the DoorDash list. And we're like, yeah. I mean, like, I haven't had it since I was 16, right? But the last time I had it, it was so god awful that I still remember it. Like, that was 15 fucking years ago. And it was still bad enough that I remember it today. So we decided, all right, all right. We want some Chinese food. Let's just let's just try it. So we order it. The orange chicken wasn't orange chicken. It was just vinegar chicken. Like, it was <laughs> literally just, like, this sour, tangy mess of bad. There was no citrus. There was no nothing. Like, everything was just the lowest quality, reheated piece of shit. Like, if you've ever gotten frozen Chinese food from your supermarket, it's basically that, that stuff yeah. is better. It's better than, than Panda Express, right? Because they actually have to, you know, sell it to people instead of feeding it to prisoners, which I imagine <laughs> is why Panda Express exists in the in the first place. Man, I'm about so. to get killed. I don't mind Panda Express. I mean, oh, shit. I'm not, I think I'm it's not saying it's, it's not inedible, but I mean, I've literally never, never had a Chinese place that was worse than it. Yeah, but this is fast food Chinese. Yeah. I even still, I guess, though. If somebody was like, here's a free meal, it's Panda Express, I'll eat it, but I will never I, go there because I want to. What a save. I kind of that put was it like this accident. way. <laughs> so um, you have McDonald's cheeseburgers, which are complete garbage too. You have Red They're Robinson that cheeseburgers. No, no, no. I, I mean, I, I'm, I like them, but I'm just in, in this vein. Then you have like Red Robin cheeseburgers, which are, you know, better quality but they're still not great and then you have like an actual really nice restaurant nice hamburger i view chinese food that way you have your mcdonald's here which is your panda express and then your red robin tier is like your traditional like weird name chinese restaurants that aren't chains mm -hmm. and then for gourmet i really don't know what to say for chinese i've never had like really really nice chinese uh i just realized i didn't mute when i was typing i apologize oh, no. to everyone that was the worst <laughs> But yeah, um, I like I like Panda Express. I'll be out there saying it. Anyway, what about you guys? Anything else fun happening this week? Because I haven't had shit this week. Like I haven't <laughs> even had food interest in this week. There we go. We got it. We got it. Discord fixed itself, and then OBS was like, <laughs> "I don't see it. I'm not seeing it." <laughs> and I'm like, "Dude, oh. it's right. It's right there. I see it." And and OBS is like, "Nah, dude. Tom's still frozen, and Irk doesn't exist." Yo, so dog, I heard you trying to do a podcast. Let me <laughs> yeah, fuck up yeah, your now, display. Now, now Let me just on. go ahead. <laughs> I think I know what you're going for. A black screen, right? Yes, this is oh it. This God. is perfect. Perfection. This is awful. I don't know oh, why like, I have no network go. connectivity. Like, it's everything right now. Well, yeah. it's actually a best case scenario. We get your voice and not your face. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it works never, really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll disagree with that. Oh, it's it's messed up again. So, Discord, what are you doing? My face. <laughs> this is so I, funny. For the love of God. <laughs> is so Why is it doing this? This is funny. Don't worry. I'll, I'll distract everyone. So, yes. Um, last week, Adam, I was complaining about my mustache because it got that long, curly phase where, like, every <laughs> bite of food, you're just, like, eating your own whiskers and it's just awful. So, I got uh, a decent, like, clipper set with guards and everything else. Um, and I, I got to say, it worked decently well. It didn't, it's not like the most amazing thing in the world, but hey, mm -hmm. turns out that if you buy a tool to fix a problem, it works sometimes. So, All right. yeah. Yeah. All right. Li live webcam fixing. Let's do this. 
So <laughs> Discord has reordered the windows for some reason. I'm on the end and I should be the first one. It's okay. I can tell you why you're not screen sharing. Turn back on your screen share. It'll fix it. Oh, okay. Yep. I didn't, I, have, wasn't it. I, didn't, I didn't have it on to begin with, but... It should fix well, it. Now my it ping on. looks not great, but not terrible. Oh, no. That oh, added no. another one. Maybe it's not. That added it's another still one. Not, That's a bad still idea. Still not fixing it. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> Thanks oh, for this so good. All right. Already. All right. Here we go. All right. Tom. Why did it reorder us? I don't know. <laughs> Okay, we're going to fix this, and we're going to be very open about it. Tom yeah. changes his name. Change your name. Okay. Well, I change it to... Oh, no, it won't, it won't work. It doesn't register you as a camera boy, Adam, because it doesn't register you as camera boy sticking you to the far there. right. Here we go. There it is. Hey. Fixed. Okay. We got we, it. We Perfect. We good? Okay. Professional now. podcast streamers. <laughs> this is fantastic. Oh, we're so good at this. Dude, fucking Discord. <laughs> I love Discord. I, I hate I, Discord. Yeah. <laughs> Not that there wasn't a fair bit of user error there still. like. <laughs> but oh, we wait. got it. Hang on. No, not quite. Here we don't. I mean, okay. it's fine. I just had this there. <laughs> it's okay. We got this shit. Anyway, no as we were saying... Actually, what were we saying? <laughs> I like that, that uh, Scott is berating you eric for messing everything up and you're not even the one running these anymore <laughs> <laughs> hey don't don't it's ruin fantastic. the illusion man i'll Hashtag take the blame, blame Eric. um uh, yeah yeah well so that's what the, that's all what the, the fuck the were weird, we saying what were we talking we about we were talking about he has one to talk panda about express we about anything. literally the worst oh uh, yeah panda express sucks so uh, yeah, no, I got it. Got it 15 years ago. Got it today, and now I'm looking forward to the ripe old age of 46 when I'm going to try it for the third time in my life. <laughs> I think tonight's going to be a pizza night for us. Going to order some pizza and be lazy as shit after the cast. Nothing Fuck wrong you. with that. I know Pizza's we're going to be lazy because we've got D and D, but I don't know where we're getting. I got a pizza today, actually. What'd you get? I made a pizza. And I used oh yes, I used garlic naan and bread instead of pizza crust. That sounds so good. Oh, it was how good. Was it? it yeah. was fantastic. Okay. Except the That's... only thing that I didn't like about it, and it's my fault, is that the crust the crust didn't really get crispy. It was kind of uh, like more soft and chewy. And I think it's just because okay. I either cooked it too hot for not long enough, or I maybe should have baked the bread a little bit first and then put the toppings on and continued cooking. Do you use a stone or you put it straight to rack? Just on rack. On well, it was on foil on rack. Okay. Racks on racks on racks. Racks on racks. Because we use a stone, and there's a for anyone who uses a pizza stone, there's a huge difference between having a pizza on the stone sitting waiting for the oven to preheat, mm -hmm. and having that stone hot and you put the pizza on yeah. a hot stone. Big okay. difference in output. I mean, I definitely oh. preheated the oven for a while before I put the pizza in, but yeah. Yeah. It was just a little too uh, flimsy, I guess. I don't I mean, have I, a pizza stone. The flavor or was fantastic, or though. Nothing. Oh, do, you ever cook frozen, do you ever cook uh, frozen pizzas? Um, uh, yeah, all the time. Do you guys put them on rack or cookie sheet or what? I put them rack. directly on the rack, but the only frozen okay. pizzas I ever buy are those like Gino's East Chicago style ones. So that's kind of a an outlier. Yeah. It doesn't really. Count. I only do uh, Red Baron. Like the super thin, give me cheese and pepperoni in a like cardboard form. <laughs> I like DiGiorno I like and I like Kroger DiGiorno's brand DiGiorno. I don't like DiGiorno. Like it's fine. But they used, I don't know, they used to have, have one with a garlic crust bread crust stuff. that I liked a lot. Yeah, they still do. Yeah. It's excellent. Okay. They have one with a croissant crust right now, like a new one. And that does not huh? sound very good to me. Nah. Do that with like a breakfast pizza and we might have something there. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Now you're on. To like get, get some breakfast sausage, like maybe some maple. Well, they typically on breakfast, like Red Baron used to make breakfast pizzas and like there's some kind of white sauce they put on it. That's excellent. Hmm. It's like, get me back to God. I've missed breakfast pizzas. Love that <laughs> shit. Is it just like pepper gravy? Actually, you know what? It probably is some kind of gravy. As soon as I, as soon as you said that, I'm like, you know what? You dumbass. It's just sense. fucking gravy. Yeah. <laughs> sausage gravy yeah man I haven't made that in a while either damn it all this food talks make me hungry as shit yeah 
Well, hey, Same. you know what can help with that? Some bigs, Taco <laughs> Bell, Taco Supreme sunflower seeds. If you're Dude, actually if you're actually hungry and eating those, me. you're going to have to eat that whole bag before you don't feel hungry anymore. Dude, I'm hungry and that doesn't even sound good. <laughs> yeah, it really like, does. That just doesn't sound like something. I would want to try it out of curiosity and not because it sounds good. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole reason I got them. Like, I'm probably going to eat a couple of them, but it's not going to be quickly. Mm. Like that's it typically is, how I buy my beer. The content. Like I buy my beer off that. Man, this sounds really weird. I'm gonna try that. Yeah. I buy anything and based on if it's weird. Um, just like I bought a a phone game. Ha! You a see that guy? Phone that's a game. Play. Yeah. Um, I bought a two dollar phone game. It's it still two bucks. Thirty minutes to beat. Yeah. And. uh yeah, I, I think it was totally worth it. So uh, the game is called Florence, and it is not my usual play. Um, it is kind of a, well, it, it literally is a romance game. You meet a, a boy and then date him and then a bunch of stuff happens and whatever. So, um, but it's not like a visual novel dating sim sort of game. Like it's, it's hard to explain. Like there's almost no gameplay. Calling it a walking simulator actually would give it too much credit because you don't even walk. You just kind of scroll and sometimes hit random buttons. But I wanted to bring it up because they do some really interesting things with the design and with not having, um, like, text during the conversations. Uh, so, like, when, when you're at the first date, you've got to put all these little puzzle pieces together in a word bubble and there's like six puzzle pieces. Like, it's not hard, but you just have to take a little while to arrange stuff. And then it floats up to the conversation. But as you progress through the game, it gets easier and easier to put these puzzles in. And like, you know, it'll go down to like four pieces and then three and then two. And then literally you're just dragging text bubbles up. Kind of like analogous to a way like when you're first meeting a person, getting to know them, like having a conversation is sometimes a, a little bit harder. Like, it takes you a while to get used to the person and to be able to talk to them. Uh, and the game, through sheer gameplay and nothing else, actually communicates that idea really effectively. Uh, another thing that they do, and I'm not going to spoil all of the game, but another thing that they do uh, is, like, when something, like, it's not like a normal conversation, right? It's a little bit terse. It's a little bit angry. Mm -hmm. The nice, like, rounded edges of, like, the, the puzzle pieces you're putting together now are, like, hard squares. And then if you're like in the middle of a fight, those will become like jagged edges and angles and corners and, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. So I'm not going to say what I know necessarily, but from what I've heard from Giant Bomb, they do some really cool stuff with it. It's not a, anything for me, but they do some yeah. cool shit with that. It's a really, really good game. It is a okay. really good game. Now, it literally takes a half an hour. It's a $2 game you're going to play once and never play again. There's no replay value except to look at the like weird, cool design things. Um, and Florence has got a lot of them. Honestly, it's, it's a really good marriage of the story they're trying to tell and the gameplay and how they tell it. Um, like it's, it's one of those things that you could easily dive. Like a f if you were like at a game design college, you could spend two weeks on Florence alone. For a two dollar thirty minute phone game, that's pretty good if you're looking for like design <laughs> inspirations or other things. You might want to uh, throw this one Jake's way as something to look at. Not something you can stream because yep. streaming that would be hard. Uh, already did. Nice. But uh, yeah, yeah, like I I can't recommend it for everyone, right? It's it's a romance game. It's it's like all emotions and storytelling and people, and that's just gross. Um, but yeah. if you're in the mood to check out something that does interesting things with design and storytelling in a non-standard way, yeah, I can recommend Florence, especially for two bucks. Just, just do it. Yeah, I, I won't ever, but no. I, I know it does cool stuff. It's definitely yeah. not a me thing. We all know that. No, no, no. Well, I actually, after I finished playing the game, the only thing I, I thought was, oh my God, Irk would fucking hate this. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can appreciate what it does. It's not something I ever want to play. Like, I'm, okay, given it's only 30 minutes, it could be something I do just to see it. it I think, I think it would actually be worth it for you to go through it. Like, you're not going to, 
appreciate like the emotional connection or the the story. Fuck the off! Storytelling. <laughs> Fuck but, off! <laughs> but from a pure <laughs> gameplay design standpoint, um, from a and cold from, anal from a cold walled off <laughs> analysis perspective, even, even there's, I'm, there's I'm, a lot to appreciate about this game. Standpoint. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've been, this entire week, this entire week, I have been getting shit on. For giving objective facts about a game, and I'm a fucking hater now. <laughs> God, this uh, has been a rough week for that. Uh, I'm sorry, Eric. E even from like just like an art perspective style, like the stuff they do and the the little things they have you do, um, like you know, games and books and stand-up comedians will all have callbacks to earlier material that leaves a, a greater impression than the first time you encountered it because. It didn't have any context associated with it when you first did that thing in the gameplay. Uh, now come back with a vengeance and have a really nice punch to them. Um, it's it's just really fucking well made. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe at some point I'll draw. It's only two it, bucks. Or it's something. two bucks. Just go buy it. It's well, on every phone available. You will literally finish it in a half hour, and then you throw it away. So this is a fucked up thing about the way we perceive things. Um. So two dollars on a phone is like, man, that, that's kind of an expensive game, dude. If it's two dollars <laughs> on Steam, Steam, I wouldn't even think fucking twice. I will literally Just try fine. any game that exists for two dollars on much, Steam. How much was this beer? Like, come on, I bought worse beers for more money. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to, I, I, I'm trying to I, think I, of I the buy. most useless thing I've ever bought for two dollars. I don't know, oh, dude. Man, I've, I I, I, I've spent more than that on a gag. So, I mean, I got no, no reason not to. I mean, Tom just did. He had the fucking shitty yeah. taco sunflower seeds. I mean, how much did you, you guys spend on the Colonel Sanders cosplays for the oh stupid like, playthrough 25, stream we did? 25 bucks a piece or something. <laughs> for the, what, yeah, hour we up, played it on stream? Pick up floor. Totally, totally worth it. It's not going to change anyone's world, but it is good for 30 minutes. And we'll give you a little bit to think about if you like looking at you know, games as art or different design ideas. Uh, speaking of other new games and games I've been getting shit on because of. So um, I finally got to play some Fall Guys. I hey. say that because for the love of God, they were down for almost the entire day yesterday. How? How were they down for so fucking long? Like okay. No one knows. You and I, you and I work in the industry that they're having issues with, right? They were having technical issues and uptime and infrastructure and servers and shit, and that's literally our job is to keep stuff like that running. Well, okay, that's that an was assumption. A severe outage. The, the, I say, the, the, there's a lot of assumptions right now about whether or not it's player related. Now, mm. different people feel different ways. As anyone in the server last night um, were around and heard Dave and I go back and forth, but. Um, the fact is they were down for way longer than what's typically done for player outages. It wasn't a long queue. It was a hard out for an entire yeah. fucking day. Ooh. It was a planned That's down rough. time that just didn't stop. They planned to go down and never came back. Yeah. Wow. I'm kind of That's wondering nuts. if the things they were fixing were security related. Like some of the, some of the stuff we've seen in fall guys and not, not like, Oh no, there are cheaters, but like legit security concerns. Because in Fall Guys, some of the bugs we've seen is uh, you know players being able to wantonly change how their name is rendered in the game by adding some HTML-like markup uh, to their to their uh, username. Like they could change their Steam username to "Hey, let's make this color and make it fucking big," and then in the game, your name would show up fucking huge. If you could leverage that to do some kind of injection or run a script or what have you, yeah, that could be super fucking dangerous for anyone who's playing the game. But I mean, that here's the thing. They had that fixed before the patch stuff. So I mean, that part okay. itself was already, like they removed the ability for names. Right now, everyone's name is Fall Guy ID number. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's yeah. everyone's it's name right now. Mitigation. I, you can't call it a fix, though, right? It's it's a mitigation. Well, no, no. What I'm getting at is that part was handled, and they were still down. Yeah, yeah. So, like, the, it's just weird. It's it's all... I wish there was more transparency about what happened. Agreed. Because there are people, I, like... I was on that Twitter, and there was two crowds. There were the dude, I just bought this game. I want to play it. 
crowd. And then there were the, oh, give them a break. Give them a break. They're, they caught fire. Give them a break. <laughs> Crowds. They had two open betas. Like, they, they kind of knew what they were getting into, I think, unless it was the worst beta in the world and didn't mm -hmm. give accurate representation of the numbers or, or scale that they needed. They were giving away shit tons of shit tons of um keys yeah that's that, yes. the one thing that did happen that was wasn't accounted for but at the same time they did this so they knew they made the game free on ps plus for playstation users okay mm -hmm. so they got a lot of players but i i pers i am a personal opinion not statement of fact that kind of outage is not from load load solutions no. are way easier than that especially when supposedly like I right now what they're supposedly running on, I know what that infrastructure is. I know what it would take to scale up roughly. Well, and worst case scenario, that, a couple hours. It it doesn't it doesn't even present itself as a load issue because load issues like on Tarkov, the worst times in Tarkov, right? You're sitting and queuing forever and you never get match made. But if you play at three in the morning on a Tuesday, you can get into a match. This and, was not like that. And this you said the big difference. Yeah. You queued. You were still queued. You just weren't popping, but mm -hmm. you were queuing. Yeah. You weren't doing that in Fall Guys. But yeah. All right. Oh, I want to move past that. Um, um, I think it's going to be a well. Oh, go ahead, Adam. I just have a question about Fall Guys because I guess I just don't get it. Why is it such a huge deal right now? Okay. It's a party so, game. <laughs> yeah, a, but a party game how many other party games Walmart. have come out that don't have this kind of buzz? It's, it's um, like like how much buzz was Gang Beasts when it came out? Not much. So I'm not going to give all the credit to Devolver because Devolver, while in entrenched gaming communities, we know who it is. Devolver is not a household development or publisher house. Mm -hmm. It's That's not a household true. name. Um, dude, they got out there with the marketing. They got the fuck out there with the marketing. Yeah. They caused a buzz, started word of mouth, got grassroots kind of shit going. Mm -hmm. It caught fire. They got the Twitter or Twitch support. Once they got Twitch support, it just poosh. So I mean, it it just blew up. It's, I was just I was just curious because I mean, I see it and it looks like it would be you know like a fun party game or whatever. But I don't see. I don't know. I guess I just didn't see the hype. Like why why is everybody so excited? Was well, so excited to try the beta and so excited to try it out. I wasn't necessarily so excited, but it was free beta, so that's always a nice thing to try. Okay. So you can just play. Yeah. But it hits on something that uh, games have tried to do this and haven't been able to succeed to take the Mario Party formula. This isn't Mario Party. So mm -hmm. what I'm saying is very loosely connected, but like Pummel Party. It's trying to take the Mario Party thing because people like minigames. People like that kind of game. This is more fast-paced. It's quicker. It's goofier. It uses some of the ragdoll mechanics that they've realized people like from games like Humans Fall Flat and gang beast and shit and they kind of play with that a little bit it's not as in depth as you get on gang beast but it still has the folly clumsy ass physics of it um it's a goofy ass game it's a fun fucking game it is a fun game it's just i'm not, I'm not gonna go about that shit anymore it's a fun <laughs> game um <laughs> the the my issues with the game on the actual game level um i feel that the start of the game is super reliant on racing games, which is fine mm -hmm. right now. And as long as they add some more variants in there, maybe get enough variants where each day it cycles through a set of part of games that would be possible for that day or something like that. I good. think the yeah. game would add a lot to itself by doing that. Makes it a little more dynamic and makes people more likely to play it regularly instead of just playing uh, it once a month. Splatoon, yeah. Splatoon was doing that to try to keep it fresh with the yeah. maps and stuff. That annoyed the hell out of me, though, until I realized that by doing that, Splatoon completely avoided uh, the issue, just like just like Halo did back in the day, of having multiplayer modes with nobody in it, right? Like, there are certain modes in CSGO today that have no one playing. I want to play Demolition. Really tiny maps, and it's kind of like casual CS, but super quick, fast, rapid-fire rounds. Mm -hmm. And nobody plays that. But with Splatoon, if I want to play a certain mode, I know, hey, at this time, that's the only shit around. You're going to play this, so you're not playing Splatoon. And I well, know they still, play that they still had their matchmaking, but I was talking even more so it's like in their matchmaking, they limited the maps. Yeah. 
So like you had three yeah. maps for your rank you that to some extent, right? Yeah, they don't they don't hard cap it. They just randomly choose it for you. Yeah. So they don't actually they don't time lock them. Like Splatoon was literally yes. like, hey, for the next five hours, this is the only four maps that are going to be in rotation. Mm. So I, I I'm not suggesting that's what they do per se, but just something to give it a, a little more. Right now the game's fine, but. I, I still question its staying power with the certain with the current buzz, but something like that, adding some more variance would definitely help with the staying power. That yeah. said, it's a twenty dollar game. I've already feel I've gotten my twenty dollars out of it. Its in game market is possibly one of the better in game markets I've ever dealt with. So I have not looked at the in game market at all. There's two types of currencies. There's like this coin, and then there's crowns. Coins you get for every, every time you play, you get coins. You always get coins every time you play. You get a crown every time you win. Oh, okay. And um, so I was thinking at first it's going to be like uh, Rainbow Six. Anyone who's familiar with Rainbow Six Vegas or uh, Rainbow Six Siege, you have an in-game currency you can buy ops with. Mm -hmm. I bought a brand new op with in-game currency, and I think I played the game for like a month and a half, two months straight before I could buy that fucking op. Like, you don't get much of that currency. This That's game's fair. not yeah. like that. Just from playing today, I bought everything that was available on the market today with the currency or with the uh, coins. The win currency is a little different. You're never going to be able to buy everything with the win currency because you got to win. You're one in 60. Mm -hmm. Your odds of winning are not always going to be that great. But you, there's never, a, they give you just enough where you feel like you're making good progress for the items you want but not enough to where you get them in a game or two. So, I mean, it, it feels good. They've got that level perfectly set. And the items, they're good. They, they look fun. The costumes are stuff that you look at like, man, I want that. That looks fucking rad. It's not just like some little scan that you're like, oh, that sucks. Like, the shit looks good. They put a lot of time and thought, I think, into some of their cosmetics. I like and the I idea of the, the wind currency. Ooh, yes. kind of cool. And as long as it can't be up. cheesed in any way by like partying up with friends or something, uh, I think uh, that's you can really cheese cool. A little bit, but it's elimination based, so mm -hmm. you all have to make it to the last round. Yeah, yeah. And then only one of you is getting the fucking crown. But I like that because it 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 gives a reward and in incentivizes winning, but it doesn't punish people for not winning because you still have that other yeah. currency you can rely on. Yes, I just I but wish you can't buy the same thing with that. All crowns right because it is one in 60 like if you had something like this in let's say fortnite or PUBG, right mm -hmm. i would never have any crowns whatsoever because i'm never going to win right i've already i've won one round of fall guys and it's not nearly as difficult as winning mm -hmm. a round of fortnite or PUBG. at least not it hasn't been for me so far mm -hmm. um but i could see like major issues with people who just aren't very good at the game trying to get that currency so being able to say like oh hey you came in second, we're going to give you half a crown. Or, oh, hey, you came in 45th, we're going to give you 3% of a crown. Like something that, sure, you can get it, but uh, winning is the fastest. So you're kind of saying you wish something like a battle pass was giving out crowns. You know, that would be well, nice. So guess what? Their battle pass gives out crowns. Oh, shit. Oh, nice. <laughs> so you can earn through the battle pass. You're not getting many. You're getting like three or four. Mm. But you can there. So, I mean, they are giving you some without winning. But I still like the fact of, like, some of the cool items. Like, hey, you've got to put some time and you have to get good at some of these maps. You want some of the fun shit. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. And because it's a barrier for cosmetics. It's not a barrier for actual game functionality. So I don't mind. A barrier for being good to looking cool is okay with me. A barrier to being good to having better maps and stuff now. So I'm yeah, fine with it. Yeah. I think this is rad. Yeah. I, like I said, I got slammed as a hater, told I don't like the game, blah, -de blah, -de blah. <laughs> it's a fun game. I really enjoy it. Their market is excellent. Um, it's 20 bucks. Or if you have a PS Plus account, pick that shit up for free. Yeah. But and for in, 20 your bucks. In your defense, Irk, and you, you said this defending yourself too, like you can still love a game and still have some you know criticizing of it or certain things you don't like about it but that doesn't mean I, that you don't like the game 
I drive the opinion that you can't actually truly appreciate a game in its entirety unless you're looking at the good and the bad around it, right? Well, I think I piss um, people off because when I come into I a know. game, I almost always come in with like a critical eye. Mm-hmm. And I know that pisses people off because it almost like okay, you guys mock me on The Last of Us because uh, I'm <laughs> yeah. pointing out this shit. I'm like, dude, that that looks kind of shoddy. And you're like, oh, oh, that grass looks bad. It's not green enough. It's just well, like that that, so, that was I mean, funny because I remember watching a play through that game and thinking like, this is the best looking PS4 game I've ever seen. Yeah. And then you play it and you're pointing out all the things, but I know that you're appreciating how nice it looks too. Like, I think it's just maybe sometimes the way you come off is like. That's the that's those are the things that you're saying that are notable because the default position is I like this. Well, I, so I, when I you do have something out. else to say, that's what you say, and it comes off as maybe more negative than what you actually feel. Or, yeah, yeah. Like I okay. So in a game like The Last of Us, the scenery by and large is beautiful. I don't personally, I don't think it needs stated because people can recognize that. Mm-hmm. What I'm calling out is things I think people might overlook. Like, if you don't really focus on this texture, it actually looks like you won't notice it. It looks kind of shoddy and stuff like that, where when you're looking at the hole, you don't notice. Like, that's the kind of stuff that I call out that I know seems nitty picky, nitty grit, or yeah. Nitpicky. I can't complete sentences. Yeah. I can't talk now. Yeah. But like, textures like that aren't, I mean, those aren't really unimportant overall in the grand picture of things. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, it's paper cuts. It's paper cuts, right? It's is it gonna kill you? No. Is it a real <laughs> risk to you? No. But enough of them can detract your experience of trying to eat mm-hmm. things at Taco Bell Taco Soup. Please, Tom. <laughs> can we? <God> damn it. <laughs> is this the new this suddenly becoming, popped yeah, up? It's, it's, it's turning into suddenly salad. Oh God. Jesus. But no, um, actually, I didn't play any of that this week. I'm kind of sad. I got sucked into some other I was, stuff. I was going to ask you if you had played any more of it or not. I've I've dug it so far. Um, I I, I want to finish it so we can actually like you know have a really short cast. Be like, hey, we're doing like a thirty minute in and out, and then we spend an hour and a half talking about the fucking game. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Because I thirty minute I, adventure in and out. Oh no no, I'm saying thirty minutes on the cast, and then we uh, say fuck that. Let's get into the spoilers. <laughs> I'm digging it though. It's 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 a good game. Um, anyone who's rating this bad, fuck off. <laughs> like, if, I like don't think it, rating. Uh, without spoiling rating, anything, like it's totally okay to not like to not like it, right? It's fine to not like it because that aspect of everything is subjective. But yes, people saying that it's just like bad and the writing is lazy. The worst and, game like, of all time. <laughs> yeah, it's like does, okay. Does, like, does the writing I, have some <laughs> issues when you take a critical eye to it? Yeah, what game doesn't? Right, <laughs> like, like a, literally the every game <laughs> is like, and in then the again, top five percent of good uh, video game writing, which puts it at like I don't know the top seventy percent of good writing for literally mm-hmm. any other medium, right? <laughs> and I even think a lot of what is considered critical, you know, good or bad writing and analysis is still pretty subjective. Subjective, and that's what I was going to say. I largely, I think, with rating <laughs> like, games, like even think, even if you're rating things that are objective, it's there's still subjectivity in it when it comes to anything that's based on art. I think you're you're rating something, yeah. Like unless there's like clear, definitive, like checkbox a computer can do it, there's going to be subjectiveness. But to Maybe me, if you're rating a game, subjectiveness, but that's a totally different conversation. <laughs> for the most part, I don't think story should have an impact on the rating. A lot of times. Oh, I uh, no, 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 well, no, 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 no. I, I, for the most part, like if, it's the entire... point, if it's a dumpster fire, it's a different story. But I'm saying, like, I didn't like the story. I thought the story went away. I didn't like. That's not a reason to downvote a game or something like that. Now, if you're saying that, dude, what if the it's fuck? A the story was incomprehensible, and, and that's that's one of the reasons you play, right? Then well, the story being bad will absolutely detract well, no, no, no. from Kingdom Hearts no, no, no. has a narrative a that's incomprehensible, bad, but that doesn't mean it doesn't have uh, glowing reviews. There's a difference between a story being bad and a story not being different. what you like. That's what I'm getting yeah. at. You not liking it versus yes. it being bad are not the same thing. Well, I think a lot of but I think a lot of the a story being bad is still subjective. 
Well, I mean, it could like, be at the level of a third grader, like kind it, of storytelling, and that yeah, I think can and, almost and be maybe it's supposed to, to be that, right? Like maybe they intentionally made a story that was super easy to digest and isn't doesn't take any risks, and you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like how I, how I much think... of it is, um, like the is the intention of the person that made it executed? And you have to know their intention to answer that question yes, and answer that aspect. That's, 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 that's why I think the story should be rated. And I because agree with that. That's how it should be rated. No, I, I But that relies on too much interpretation, as creator, too. As a creator, as an artist, part of your job is understanding how the consumer, how the, the person who is consuming your creation is expected to react to that, right? And how is abstract art a thing? <laughs> <laughs> So we clearly well, can't count on Irk to tell us whether yeah, or not abstract yes art Yes and is no, good because not. some art just exists because that's what the artist wanted to make. And that's what they wanted yeah. out of it. And then if anybody else likes it, it's irrelevant. But let's be real. When it comes to AAA video games, I would argue <laughs> that most of them aren't going for that highbrow, I'm making this because it's my dream sort of deal. They're going for the, oh shit, we got to get paid. We've got a deadline in three months. And we're literally starving here, working 90 hours a week. So would it have been fair to kill Mario Odyssey because its story was bad? No, no. no. And that's, that's not my point at all. But so Nintendo said, hey, what point. do Mario gamers care about? And story is not one of those things. The Last of Us devs very, very much said, what do gamers care about? A good story. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't, we're not disagreeing with that. What are, what are they selling the game on? You're saying, but you're fitting into the intent when you say that. You're saying their intent was to have that kind of story. And that's yes. kind of what Adam was saying. Like, you're gauging their intent, so you're trying to imply it, which is still a dangerous ball game. Basically, I'm saying that no matter how you try to evaluate art, there is going to be a filter that runs through your head that is subjective. Yes. yes. Because you're Unless either... No, <laughs> don't do it, Tom. <laughs> don't do it. No, damn it. Get out of this. Anyway, uh, last of us I will beat it, and then we will talk. Yes. Good talk. Right. I just um, don't appreciate how they they brought in all the Star Wars canon. Like, why on earth was Han Solo? Why? There? Yeah. Why? Why did they need to have Boba Fett rescue Ellie from the volcano? It just doesn't make any sense. No. The, I did cry at the Chewbacca death scene for sure, right? Yeah, but I, it it felt kind of kind of hand fisted in a way, almost like they're adding a bunch of product placement for no fucking reason. Get the fuck yeah. out of here, dude. I don't anyway, know. Who, um, who would do that? I mean, who would put something like a delicious ginger flavored sparkling water? Wait a minute. Mm. Did you say into oh, a a ginger flavored sparkling water oh my god I, yes, has exactly. anyone ever told tom that he has <laughs> to be a <laughs> <laughs> isn't uh, this refreshing it Adam? is very refreshing that 365 Ooh. whole foods market ginger sparkling water it just really <sighs> rounds out the evening it has natural flavors with other natural flavors <laughs> zero calories and no sodium speaking of which that is one of my the stupidest sounding labels on anything ever is made with natural flavors and other natural flavors like hello <laughs> what is natural that? flavor thing cover you had to say other natural flavors yeah like okay i i thought i misread that when i i literally <laughs> just read the text no, it's naturally flavored with other natural flavors what the fuck I'm sure there's a technicality, so that's how they can get around being like, uh, to make it sound more natural than it is, I guess. I don't know. Maybe that there's other natural things they're putting in to simulate flavors of other things. I don't know. Oh, fuck it. I'm not I trying hate, to I hate, I hate marketing. <laughs> Legal's got to deal with that. Tom, you have another game I've never heard of. I'm gonna I hear do. It. So Tell this me is about. also... A, so I decided to get into a Devolver digital published game Ooh. recently. Carrion. Oh, I played the demo a, to that a little while back. What did you think? Yeah, uh, I like it. I like it. Now, I'm only like three or so hours in. I'm not very far into the game, but it is a reverse horror game Metroidvania where instead of like running from the spooky, scary monster thing that's going to kill everyone, you are the spooky, scary monster thing that's going to kill everyone. It is a really novel concept. It is executed pretty well. And I think it actually does really fit the Metroidvania uh, kind of gameplay 
pretty, pretty excellently. You break open containers to like modify your DNA and give you more powers. Uh, you can grab people. There's a big physics system. Like you can chuck them against the wall, tear them in half, just nom on them for a while. You know, normal monster stuff. I, I like the nom environmental at, um, interactivity too. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you grab doors and you can throw like objects around. So if there's like a guy with a gun or a shield, you can just like pick something up and slam him down. And it's it's really cool. The one call out I've got, though, is that control system is really good because it's not very normal. Like you haven't really played anything that controls quite like your character in Carrion. And it makes you, I don't know, kind of embody the the evil you know monster with a million tentacles sort of creature uh it feels really really good to play um so yeah i i downloaded it on uh xbox game pass so i was like oh shit this is out oh fuck it's on game pass holy shit let's play it oh i didn't know it was on game pass yeah i've been loving game pass because it's like oh hey here's some weird shit that i would have never like actually spent money on or Mm -hmm. or played regularly let's try it and so um, is game pass microsoft's way to get everyone on board with all digital yes yeah probably okay sign me up sorry derailed your continue so so uh yeah one thing i liked about the controls of that game when i when i played the demo is um so so you play as the the monster with all the tentacles that are like grasping all the surfaces and moving around that way but it controls like you're flying Mm -hmm. because but you're not because you're actually using the tentacle it just it feels cool i don't know What's it was really very nice. fluid I got, to, I got to a big wide open area and it's it's not just like the controls that you know kind of feel floaty or that you're flying but it takes into account the actual physicality of of the monster so when you or when i got to this big open area and there's no walls to grab onto i just dropped like a fucking rock like, I, I couldn't grab onto anything, so I couldn't climb or float around or move. Uh, it was really, really, really interesting. Um, so, yeah, I, I really love the physicality in that game. It feels good to play. Hmm. The, the, the idea, like, you, you put on the notes, reverse horror, and I'm just like, that yeah. sound, just that premise sounds yeah. interesting. It's, yeah. it's cool because it balances, at least as far as I could tell from what I played, it balances the whole power fantasy thing with also having to like you're vulnerable enough that you have to pay attention to what you're doing and, and try to play yeah. smart. But you still get that feeling of being this unstoppable Badass. force. That, yeah. Like there there are some enemies that have, you know, guns and uh, shields and stuff like that. And you actually have to think about, OK, how do I take them on? I can't just like bum rush them because uh, I'll, I'll get killed. Or I'll lose enough of my mass that I can't use, you know, whatever power. Which is another cool thing Carrion does. Uh, you can actually deposit biomass at certain points in, in the, the world and actually shrink the size of your guy, which does two things. One, it decreases your health. Two, it makes you a bit faster because you're not a lumbering mess. And three, it actually changes the abilities you get. So if you're small, you know, right now the ability is that I can go Spider-Man and just, like, blast people with, like, out of sticky monster web i guess and tie them up and that works really well for you know guys with guns or when i've got like a sight line on somebody but i can't quite you know get through myself because i'm too big but when i'm bigger i have this charge that breaks through certain pieces of the environment and literally splatters people into pieces uh so you have to kind of balance the you know how much health do i need going into the situation what kind of powers do i need to unlock the puzzle uh, how do I regain this back if it's like a one-way door? There's there's a lot of good like Metroidvania design sense in here that really brings everything to life. Hmm. We're gonna check it out. But yeah, if you've got Game Pass, I mean, download it. It's like I don't know, two gigs. It's really tiny. It's gonna take you no time at all to get started. Uh, and I, I think it's worth it at least to check out what a reverse horror game looks like. <laughs> I'm trying that. to think of any other games that did that, and I'm. I'm failing to think of any. Brave. Like it, it can't. It couldn't have been the first. Well, Bioshock that's different. Two? Bioshock Two, you were the big daddy. So but yeah. you were you weren't a bad guy though. Yeah. You, weren't, you probably weren't just straight up preying on <laughs> victims. <laughs> yeah. You weren't. I don't know. You weren't a monster murderer. 
But yeah, I, I really, really have enjoyed my time with Carrie, and I'm going to go back to it here soon. Yeah. All right. Pretty you cool. have to stream that sometime. I want to see that. Yeah. All right. Let's see what else we got. Um, Hey, do we have any tales from Tarkov this week, Adam? Anything fun pop out? Um, tales from no, Tarkov. No, not a lot. I've been getting more PM. <laughs> I've been getting more PMC kills lately than normal. I feel like I'm no, starting I've... to get a little bit better at combat. My aim is still trash, but I feel like I'm starting to make better decisions combat wise. That, that's always a that's always a huge bonus. Mm -hmm. And I got a grenade kill today, but the first oh, grenade kill yeah. of the whole wipe, I think. <laughs> you see, I've, was, I've been playing with Adam Lowe this week, and I've been putting him in bad spots because I was running some offlines just to get used to a few of the new areas. And we're running, and I see some PMCs. And, of course, my brain's offline scav mode. So as soon as I see them, I just line up, pop, pop, do a few shots, and I realize, shit, I just let PMCs know where we're at. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, of course, they come over here, destroy me. And then Adam craftfully just goes and, like, flanks them, takes them all out by himself. Nice. Like God mode. That felt, it felt pretty good. I'm I'm used to feeling really trash at the game and then being frustrated at how bad I am. And it was nice to actually feel confident in that engagement. Like it was cool. Yeah, that was, that was you did really good there. Thanks. Hey. Yeah. Hey. But no, myself, I I didn't do anything in Tarkov worth note, so fuck that. You killed um, a guy today in cold blood. Just yeah. to watch him die? Mm, yeah, yeah. kind of. Actually, because he was sniping or look to be uh potentially snipe at some other folks ah so he got snipped oh no oh, snip snipe snipe but um snipped. sniper got snipped um anyone sniper have any snipped. other games or are we just gonna pass That's on to this? literally the only thing i've played all week yeah like, like i work has killed me i didn't even play oh, rocket Mac? league on sunday or anything like literally oh, wow that was it that's the only thing i played the whole week <laughs> Well, in that case, I think it's a good time to do a little something something here. Let's do a little Indeed. something something, yeah. A little something something? We do, yeah. Something, something. We've got a little something something. Yeah, we've got a little something something. something. You want to go ahead and um, talk about it, Adam? Yeah, so we've got our top plays of the month montage for July. Uh, we're a week late, but, you know, these things happen. We had uh, Eric was out of town for a lot of it, and he usually puts together most of the stuff, um, picking out the plays and all of that, so... But yeah, we have our, our top plays of the month. These are plays from the community, from any game. Um, every day we post one on our Twitter, and then at the end of the month we grab up the best 10 plays and make a little montage. So, um, Eric, if you're ready to roll it, we'll, we'll, get it, we'll get that going. All right, here we go. Roll that I'll beautiful beam footage. Roll it. Hell yeah. <laughs> and I haven't seen the montage, though. Hell yeah. Yeah. Let's see what we got. John Rar all day. John Rar. Oh, he's on the back wall. Oh yeah. I love those. Oh my. <laughs> Dirty angle. The goalie's never ready for that. No, not really. How can you be? <laughs> Here's oh, someone Adam. we know. Hey. About to do a little uh, dirt nasty here. Boom! Take off. I love reverse flicks. They just get so much fucking power. They're just fun. So much Slugger. Power. Slugger. This Rocking that Bacchus mod alpha boost. Oh, the catch. That's the really nice. Flybys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was really nice. <laughs> the old ankle breakers. Get wrecked. It acro. Oh, with the pass. Dude, sharing nice. is caring. <laughs> I love a good pass. A good pass play feels better than a good shot, IMO. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. Fitzy. Here's our, here's our reset master. <laughs> Fitzy. Speaking of. With the reset. <laughs> Oh. He's It'd just be what he do all day long. Yeah. A couple of his clips got deleted, but I think they were all resets. <laughs> frozen. We got frozen. 
First time this month ever putting a clip in. Getting in the mix. Oh, that was nice. With a nice, Check that out. A nice double touch. That the was top, clean as hell. That top corner, too. Play it into the wall, off the wall, and then doubled. Real nice. Saw things. Saw things. Love this because um, we're in Spike Rush, boys. Oh, oh my shit. God. Oh, my <laughs> oh, God. He catches that? it. Dribbles it to himself. What was that? This is dirty. That's a bannable offense. <laughs> that is dirty. The goalkeeper had a family. It's smoke. It's smoke. Playing the old defense. And then, boop. Nice. Ooh, little offense. His movement is so fluid here, too. It was so smooth. Just a nice. Just a pitch. Next run. Part of the IGL roster. Go support them whenever they got their shit going. But this. Oh, okay, okay. All that's what right. I called the VP special. <laughs> Threw a little Twizzler in there too. Plays. Right there, Twizzler. Yep, the little Twizzler. Nice low angle. Number one, and Joey. Joey. This is this is dirty. Oh, a reset <laughs> oh double God. cut. The reset is the hit. The game in the fucking double. Nice. There it is. Ooh. Wow. Dirty. That was Fantastic. Beautiful. So yeah, if you would like to be part of this sexy montage. Jump in Discord, put your clips into your plays of the day. Now, that said, you put those clips in there, you hit that fucking save button before you do it. Please. Because they'll be gone in please seven save, days. Please save your clips. We've save missed out. We've clips. unfortunately missed out on some really good ones. Mm -hmm. It sucks because I I'm not saving these clips as I review them initially. Like I'll review them every week. So I see most of these clips. Like the ones that don't like when I say most is I check every clip myself. But almost all the time, I see them before they're deleted. And there's some really good ones that end up getting wiped off. So make sure to click save. Please. And, and a PSA. Anyway, <laughs> you fellas want to move on to some news? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. We got we got some fun news right here. Very first one. Um, Animal Crossing New Horizons has officially sold more copies than all Metroids combined. Wow. <laughs> this game has done Nintendo so, well. How many Metroid games are there? Uh, um, a few. At least one. There's definitely more than one. Yeah, at least one. There's. Uh, I, I'm not a fan of the series, but what, there's like three mainline and two primes? Or is there three primes? Uh, no, no, there's, there's, there's more than... Plus the fusion... So They've got Fusion, Zero Mission, uh, One Two, Super Metroid. Uh, let's see, Fusion was in there. Then Prime. There's Prime Two, Prime Three, Hunters. So about ten. We'll, we'll just estimate it around ten entries. Yeah, that's probably <laughs> safe. That's 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 pretty good. That's yeah, that's and impressive. They're still adding stuff. Like they just added some Dream World thing where you can go see other people's islands and stuff, so you get some inspiration on what you want to do with yours. The game's a living game. I'm not used to seeing that out of this type of game. Yeah, and it's not just living in the way that oh, original Animal Crossings were with seasonals. Like they're adding shit constantly, which is really nice. It's good to see. Mm. I mean, when you look and at it, I mean, it, it it makes sense, I guess, that it would sell more than Metroid. I mean, you've got the multiplayer yeah. aspects. It's uh, I, it's. It's more. It's more. It's for more casual audiences, which broadens the yes. the demographic. Yeah, yeah. I, I think this is really an audience thing. Like Metroid and Metroidvanias are really. I mean, I don't want to say that it's a super niche genre, right? It's a it's yeah. a fucking genre for a reason. But Animal it's, Crossing it's is more going of an to old school to genre, a whole, right? A lot more. Yeah. Um, Animal Crossing is going to appeal to a whole lot more people than Metroid would. A Absolutely. Whole lot more. A lot more, but yeah, 
really, really good news for Nintendo. Doing well for them. Um, this next news I found hilarious. So um, I didn't note his name, damn it. There's a novelist who um, writes novels based in reality. So like they're novels about like actual the actual world. Um, he needed to um, have his characters do something with red dye. So he's like, well, fuck, how would they make red dye in this scenario? So he Googles how to make red dye. <laughs> he ends up grabbing an ingredients list from Zelda Breath of the Wild and puts <laughs> that into his novel. So this novel contains characters from Breath of the Wild in it. <laughs> Excellent. That's fantastic. How does the recipe um, when, for red dye involve characters? Um, it's like um certain knob uh, like the lizard dude's tails and stuff oh, like that. Okay. Yeah, I see. It's a post tail and monster parts and yeah, good stuff like very, that. Very very Zelda E things. So yeah, that that was funny. I went called out on about it. He just openly said, yeah, I just Googled and took the first result. <laughs> so I appreciate that honesty. He's like, I have no clue what Zelda is. So like, this no dude clue what Zelda know. is? Oh, my God. But so wait, wait, I'd be, so on, wait. Most people so have heard this, of Zelda in general. This motherfucker thought, oh, so to how people actually make red dye is they take Lizaphos tail, <laughs> uh, some moblin <laughs> horns, and then they cook I it over an enchanted could... fire. Got it, yeah. Yeah, the enchanted fire part, I guess, would be the weird part. But those other things, like those, could be real things that that a normal person wouldn't know or something. Fucking Lizaphos tail. Yeah. But yeah, um, I thought it was quite That's hilarious. Sure. And then his his willingness to completely just own it was awesome. Like I I, I appreciate that a lot. It's like yeah, yeah man, I just fucking googled that. <laughs> to, to put on a tin foil hat, I wonder how dangerous that is though, because Nintendo is. Not a copyright owner that is um, super friendly to to transformative work. <laughs> It'll be interesting, uh, especially since like it it wasn't done in a. I don't know. It, it's, it's hard it's to say. It's probably pretty inconsequential to his story too. Like he just I, needed yeah, a recipe I, I for a red dye. Like how gonna... important could that be within the context of that story? <laughs> if there's if he was willing to history? Google it and then just use the first result regardless. It could not have I, been that important. Yeah. Let's put it this way. I, if there's ever a second edition, if there's a second edition that's going to be omitted. It'll be a different yeah. recipe. Yeah, probably. I, that said, if you're Googling the first thing you see and then putting that in a book without like understanding any of it, though, I question <laughs> the rest of the writing. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> it depends on how insignificant it was, I guess. I mean, okay, in that case, like, look at NCIS, all the shit they do around technology. Oh, no, yeah. no. We, okay, no, you, you can't compare that. That's like comparing something to Hitler, <laughs> right? You cannot use NCIS in an argument. Like, oh, yeah, well, what about CSI Cyber? Nah, dude, nah. So, yes, I could compare all food to literal steaming piles of shit, but I don't because nobody actually enjoys that. You know what I'm saying, though. Like, it's... <laughs> But anyway, let's move on. <laughs> um, In this podcast, Tom compares NCIS to Hitler. Yes. Yes. Um, so a little <laughs> bit of a rehash. That you can't... Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a rehash. Um, Halo, free to play. Um, yes. I wanted to know what you... I, I was... You were missing last podcast when we had this initially. And you're the Halo guy. And I wanted to know what the Halo guy thought about it. So... Okay. Um, I, I played where? Halo this week. I knew I was forgetting a game. <laughs> I played Halo nice. 2. It was hey. fun. Oh. Campaign or multiplayer? Campaign. Sorry. Nice. Sorry. Yeah. Literally, I was talking to Eli. Eli's Halo never 2 campaign was Halo. fine. The flood section kind of sucked. Or the, ar the, the, ar the Arbiter sections I hated. Arbiter yeah. sections were awful, but the story component of it I liked. I liked what they did with the Arbiter. I hated playing as the Arbiter. Mm -hmm. Which is weird. Because Halo is one of the only shooters I ever care about the short story on. But um, I mean, how could you not care after Reach, right? I love it. It's so damn. fucking good. Um, but free to play, I don't know, man. Um, I could see it working. They're trying to do uh, the campaign. They're trying to do it more like a game as a service, which will work for the campaign. Mm -hmm. So I can see them making the multiplayer free because it fits the game as a service model better because they don't have to worry about monetizing the expansions onto the campaign or the multiplayer, which is what they've notoriously done. Ever since Halo 2, they've had map packs. 
And this gets rid of map packs. So you don't have to fragment your player base anymore, which could be deadly if you're doing a game as a service. Because you have to have your player base for long term if you're doing games as a service. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's got, to me, that's got to be the only reason they're doing it. Unless I mean, they're going to monetize the shit out of it. In that case, I'm scared. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, Halo's not exactly in its prime right now, right? No. So, no. Uh, Halo I mean, 5 I could is see a the free to play. Four. But yeah. 4 was the worst that it's ever been. Mm -hmm. So, it's probably, they probably knew that if they charged you know, for the multiplayer overall, they're not going to see the growth that they're looking for in their online player base. Yeah. Um, I also wonder, so since Halo 2 skins have been a thing, Halo 3, they got big. Uh, people really, like, were doing achievements to get, like, the uh, the samurai sword and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if they're going to do, like, cosmetic deals or cosmetic purchases, which I'm fine with. Um, Probably. Well, there's because rumors. There's rumors of a battle pass system too, which haven't been confirmed, right? Right. So they that, could that, be, none of that's been confirmed that I've seen. They could be doing something it, with that. But Halo has limited room for cosmetics, as far as I know, unless they mm -hmm. start going super cartoony, which is dangerous because that doesn't fit the tone of Halo. Mm -hmm. Halo, like True. you can't start pulling out like fucking pubs. I mean, the, the grunts are the grunts are kind of goofy. Yeah, they're yeah, goofy. goofy. They're goofy, but I mean, in a um, cosmetic sense, they're not cartoony. Yeah. So, like, you now. can't have a Fortnite style skin start <laughs> popping off in there. It just wouldn't fit the game. Yeah. So, uh, actually, on this, we had another news topic where Microsoft is responding to Halo Infinite questions. One of the big ones is, guys, this looks like dog shit. And their answer has been, like, okay, A, it's not ready yet. B, um, it, we're we're going back to the Halo Combat Evolved art style. So they want to make things kind of not as gritty as some of the later Halos. Like not as not as gritty or realistic as four Rich. and five. Yeah, yeah they five they want to gritty. Yeah, they they want to go back to like a cleaner, um, less noisy art style. Mm -hmm. Is the way they put it. Yeah, uh, which you know, less making, bloom you know, and crazy yeah. lighting and shadows, yeah. and like Halo should never look the same as Call of Duty, right? They're just not the same game. They have vastly different feels. Um, but at the same time, it I, I don't know. It, it looks like it might backfire on them. We'll have to see when the game you know fully releases. But I mean, people are not happy about the but, monkey bird. But they yeah. they called out that going to a different aesthetic is not the same as just in general bad graphics. And they said mm -hmm. their graphics, they've been working on it. That is not a complete thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and they like also they, mentioned they that, that people called out stuff from the trailer in the backlash that they didn't uh, consider before and are now considering changing or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But, um, which I don't know. I went to me. Oh, go ahead. I mean, I went back and watched that trailer after we talked about the, you know, everybody's reception to it and how how bad everybody thought it looked. Like, overall, just in general, at a glance, I don't think it looked that bad. If you get, if you Thank look, you. if you, no, uh, caveats here. Um, but no, once you start looking at like the character models close up and stuff, like that brute looked absolutely terrible. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the yeah, lighting was weird because there weren't any shadows underneath some of the people. <laughs> like, that's uh yeah. that that was a huge one, but I do actually like the kind of flatter, simpler aesthetic of the game. Like I I I didn't think that looked bad, and I think other than like the specific, um, like shadows on the the enemies and stuff. Like overall, the lighting I think looked okay outside and stuff. Like I think that looked good. Also, um, something I don't know if you guys called out last week. Like it came out. That thing's going to be running at 120 frames on the Xbox yes. Series X. Yeah. Which is But awesome. it's easy like, when you're going back to Halo CE graphics, right, guys? Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, but anyway, yeah. um, I, I'm torn with the free-to-play. I just want to get back to that real quick just because I'm going to buy the game, and I'm afraid of what free-to-play might do. Yeah. That's my only concern. I don't want this game riddled with hackers. Halo 2 had a big issue with lag switches. I don't want to see that kind of shit come back. Anyway, 
Enough of Halo. Let's uh, let's talk about Tenth Cent, shall we? No. So there's no. <laughs> oh, okay. In that case, uh, let's talk. No, fuck you. Uh, so Tenth Cent, uh, everyone that's here probably understands huge tech conglomerate mm-hmm. all over the place, as well as gaming world. Big influence in the gaming world. There's an executive order that people were worried that was going to impact gaming. Uh, it has been clarified this is only going to impact WeChat and will have no impact on their gaming front, which is great because mm-hmm. that would be monstrous to the gaming community. Yeah. So, so good PSA to, to everybody. Here. If you see these articles, you know, circling around, because I know a lot of them circled around the, the news media cycle or whatever, um, it, it's not going to affect games. So Yeah, games are safe. Safe for now. And for now, <laughs> yes. You know what's not safe? VPs at Ubisoft who do bad things because <laughs> Ubisoft fires fuckers. Yeah. Well, you know, when so, you have sexual misconduct allegations, generally things <laughs> result in action, or at least should. Yeah. So just yet another example of Ubisoft is following through with the we're going to find the fuckers. Yeah. And um, yeah. the more really high ups have gotten fired now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they so. are they are cleaning house which is good to see sad that yes. it had to get there and sad mm-hmm. that people are fucking garbage but mm-hmm. i'm glad they're doing something yeah dragon yep yeah. um and then other sad news boulders gate 3 got delayed it was supposed to come the early access was supposed to launch this month it's been pushed to an indefinite date it's sad but i'm accepting the fact that i'd rather be good at or at the early access launch than not. Yeah, for sure. Uh, my so. my opinion is that they can take as much fucking time as they want. Like we we have seen RPGs come out of this dev studio before, and they are incredible. I would much rather have Larian just uh, like even even if it's you know a year from now, two years from now, just make it good. That's all I care about. Baldur's Gate has been you know dead for a long time i want to see it brought back with a vengeance yeah and, that, and, and that's pretty consistent with how we usually view game delays right we'd rather have a good mm-hmm. game delayed than uh a, a potentially good game rushed and ruined yeah yes but i will say this i'd also rather not have a date and then it just comes out i love when that shit happens fucking love it it doesn't <laughs> happen often yeah but it's such a good like oh and also this game you can play it now yeah, such an oh, awesome fucking yeah. thing to drop. But all right. Anyway, uh, Ghost of Tsushima is the fastest growing new IP for PlayStation or Sony, I should say. Um, it has surpassed Horizon Zero Dawn and units moved in the time frame. So I don't know shit about this. I know it's, it's gotten a lot of buzz buzzing. and it's got some pretty from, good reception. Yeah. From what I've heard of the game, it's it's a solid game um i'm i'm not it's not really something i'm gonna buy right away but Mm -hmm. you know when it hits the the 30 dollar game of the year edition yeah i'll pick it up it looks cool for sure i know jake fucking loved ghost of tushin yeah he he wanted 100 percent of it that's how much he loved the game (laughs) so I don't doubt it's good, especially if it's passing something at the reach of Horizon. It's just I'm very ignorant to this game right now. <laughs> I'm going to have to fix that, but as of right now, I don't know much. Yeah. Uh, so the only thing you need to know about Ghost of Tsushima is that there are foxes and you can pet them. Hey. Yeah, isn't, it, the isn't, it, isn't it pron- pronounced Tsushima? Is it? Right. I think Sushima. it's Tsushima. Tsushima. Oh. I wasn't no, so sure. Tsushima. DLS is killing us right now. So. Oh, AOL Instant Messenger redeemed hydrate three times. Stay hydrated out there. Stay hydrated. But yeah, we'll have to we'll have to tap um, Jake in sometime to come on a cast and For sure. talk about yeah. this one. Yeah, because I I would like to know more about it. It, it Indeed. looks intriguing, and given that it's got such you great. You can, you can <laughs> yeah, that's that's all you really that's need. All you need to know. Yeah. We're getting a lot I of don't hydrates. have anything more to drink. All Fuck the hydrates hydrating. are coming in. I'm out of fluids. Wait, Eric, you don't have any 365 Whole Foods Market God ginger spice. Oh, anyway, I, I do. Adam and I do. Tom, this next one's yours because I don't know what this is about. Um, 
Steam hangs on VR Surge four months after Half-Life Alex. So they're still yeah. selling them or they're still playing? Um, they are still selling them. So, uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. I, so Half-Life Alex, people thought, oh, people are just buying VR sets for Half-Life Alex. We'll probably see a bunch of returns and the numbers decrease after, you know, people play through the game and return their VR headsets and hopefully get some money back or, or sell it. No, when it comes to the Steam hardware reviews, people have bought VR headsets and are holding them. Now, it's not a bunch, right? The, the most recent calculations put the VR headset population of Steam in the 2 to 3% range, mm -hmm. which isn't a lot. But when you consider that the average price of VR is roughly 500 bucks, like across all the headsets, yeah, there's, there's a whole lot of them. And, uh, you know, they're, they're holding on. So that's good. We're getting more VR, guys. We're more VR. More. All right, guys, we appreciate all of the hydrate uh redemptions here or the redeeming the hydrate thing but we are on a podcast and we are obligated to speak so we can't just sit here chugging our drinks the whole time yes, we can. Well, yes we i'm can. literally out so i can give a monologue if you guys want to drink but i think that'd also be why they wouldn't want to do that i'm gonna have to pee because, so much later cheers because the whole monologues time. are not good everyone should know I this t2 i've got just, this water just nitpick I've got some water bottle I've Nit got a ginger <laughs> Just water. nitpick I some critically acclaimed nitpick. video game graphics. Yeah. Let, let me make everyone else hate me for taking a take <laughs> that, you know, you know Tell what? us I how awful Red Dead, Dead Redemption 2 looked. No, you shut the fuck up. That game was great. <laughs> Those balls shrank in the cold. <laughs> I was about to say, our favorite part was horse balls. But no, that game was fucking gorgeous. Unlike this really game right now, just going around in a circle. Yeah, what is this? Anyway. What is going on here? I have not ever seen this happen in Rocket League. Neither have I. Let's see how long this goes while we continue on the news, huh? Yes, this is good. Yeah, that works. Uh, Nintendo <laughs> has removed Pikmin 3 from the Wii U shop. Ironically, it's coming out, or maybe not so ironically, it's coming out on Switch soon. The same game, oh. re-released to the Switch. So, let me put this in uh, business terms. Stop selling it cheap. We're about to sell it more expensive. Yeah, this so this this hurts me. Nintendo usually doesn't do like they've done a whole lot of shady shit, and it's not usually like EA levels of comedically evil. But they're about to release Pikmin 3 Deluxe for the Switch. They made an announcement trailer and then they went to the Wii U shop and uh they joined the game. You can no longer buy Pikmin 3 on the Wii U eShop so they can sell more copies of the Switch version. This is quite literally EA levels of evil pettiness. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm going to give a, a big old 72 pin connector, double barreled fuck you to Nintendo for being really, really fucking shitty right now. Um, it's been a while yeah. since we've been hating on Nintendo. I think the last time I was, was gonna uh, say... we were talking about Nintendo Switch Online and how it's basically AOL from the mid 90s, but a bit worse. That was the it's Nintendo clip. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, um, yeah, fuck you, Nintendo. That's a dirtbag move. Um, you know what is an awesome move? Braid's releasing an anniversary edition, and I haven't I'm played so that game excited. in a long time. Oh. There's going to be dev commentary. It's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. That game was, you know, for me being the guy who hates pretentious art games, I actually really dug the level designs in that game. Yeah. That game was Braid, great. Braid was fantastic. Braid, tur Braid turned my brain upside down twice. I love Braid. And it's like Braid and World of Goo started off like the massive indie kick, right? That yeah. was Xbox yeah. Live Arcade. It was uh -huh. one of the first games. Those were one of the first games on there. And it really got this whole idea of indie games cemented in the gaming populace, right? Xbox you don't have Live to Arcade. To a game stop. You could just <laughs> like buy this shitty thing for 10 bucks. Xbox Live Arcade does not get enough credit for what it did for indie games. Agreed. 100% agreed. I could not like, agree more. I loved Xbox Live Arcade. Um, we used to play a lot like Peggle. Peggle got huge because of that shit. Yeah, Peggle right. Peggle was fun. Game. It's a good game. So uh, we do have a question in chat. Why haven't Nintendo released an updated Skyward Sword on the Switch yet? Uh, oh, let's God. make some enemies, guys, because Skyward Sword is the literally the worst Zelda game ever created on par with the CDI versions from Philips. It was Ooh. in a front. It is literally one of the only Zelda games that I just stopped playing before I even beat it. It was bad. And Tom, was, you were was no it bad or did you just not house. like it? 
Mr. No, no, Objective, it is, and it's critically, critically fucking hated. And and Jake, Jake, saying saying the water temple sucks is like saying water is wet. Like we know. Nobody cool. likes the water level in any game ever. <laughs> well, in the Zelda water Change my mind. Is <laughs> I, I can't. I can't. Okay, I'm gonna give one exception to that. Bioshock, which is entirely a water level. Uh no, it's not because you don't actually I mean there might be a part where I don't remember where you swim in it, but most of the time you're contained within a building underwater, which is not the same thing. Water temple is awful. Okay, Mario sixty four water levels, yeah, okay. I guess even a broken clock is right twice a day. Mario sixty four's water levels were legit. You got that saying right this time. Hey, I'm I did, impressed. I did, guys. I'm better. <laughs> uh anyway. Um, let's move on, huh? Oh, wait, Subnautica. Sorry. Subnautica? Oh, yeah, oh. that's actually really good. Yeah. <laughs> Other than that, though. <laughs> they're, they're Very rarely are water Any game that good. isn't primarily underwater that becomes primarily underwater for a level is trash. What? So, what? what? what's, what? why do they just blank on that fucking horror game? What, Soma? Is the horror game underwater? Yeah, Soma. Um... Uh, there are a couple of underwater sections. I don't know if they're they're not traditional underwater levels. All right, I so that might be that. the exception because the, I actually really really love the underwater parts of that game. <laughs> Very unsettling. Anyway, we're fuck you guys in your water levels. <laughs> water, water. So fuck Skyward Sword. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just in general, like I'm I'm not a Zelda guy, so whatever. I could take yeah, it or leave it. I won't play it if it's on the Switch, so it doesn't matter to me. Uh, and also, oh. despite being showed state of play, all Eon Must Die devs have reportedly left the house. Yeah, so this is this is fucking shitty. Apparently, the uh, this is not a publisher doing this; is a development house doing. Uh, the person who let it stole the IP from somebody, then pushed them out of the company, and then had a bunch of shit like telling artists that don't do stuff in certain mediums, do it or you're fired. And then they sucked. And then I said, well, fine, you're not getting paid. And they're like, but I'm bad at this. And you know that we have people to do this kind of work. And then they haven't been paid and it got shown off. The game got shown off at Sony state of play and it's just not happening. Like all the devs just said, not nah, fuck this shit. Super toxic. Uh, so yeah, they left. A uh, small indie dev house and really, really shitty, awful working conditions and not getting paid. So, video games. Hey. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Because it was sh Sony is showcasing it. So, I'm wondering if Sony's going to come in with some money and say, nah. listen, you're going to straighten up. Nah. The, the only way that they could fix that entire dev studio is by firing literally the entire top half of it. <laughs> and everybody already quit. So, like, what are they going to do? Convince everyone to come back? Hire new. Ah, that is really dangerous. I mean, it's what they did with the uh, Star Wars. They completely left it and started over. But either way. Yeah. That's what's happening there. Kind of kind of crazy. Um, also, you just posted. There's lasting news I did not know. Uh, yeah. Hitman 3 coming to PSVR. That's kind of rad. I'm really excited. So Hitman 3 is going to be uh, the the uh, final game, we think the final game, in the World of Assassination Trilogy, which is a fancy way of saying that all the levels and everything are compatible between games. So if you buy Hitman 3, you can play all the content from the remade Hitman 1, the remade Hitman 2. I can't say remade. They're totally different games. But the, they took the fucking name. I hate <laughs> game companies now. Um, anyway. The latest Hitman 1, the latest Hitman 2, and now the upcoming Hitman 3 can be all played on the same game, which is really cool. Uh, really Hitman fun. 1 was actually downloadable DLC for the second game. Um, those games are fucking great, and oh my god, I really hope it's not a PSVR exclusive. I oh, want no, Hitman man. VR, damn it, on a good platform. So far, the devs haven't said anything either way that I know of, mm -hmm. um, but... Holy shit, if this thing comes to VR, you guys are in for some Hitman streams because that is three games worth of content that I'm going through. I'm going to strangle yeah. the fuck out of some people while dressed as a flamingo. Let's do it. <laughs> also, flamingo. Um, was Doom the first of the, let's name our game, the original name, and then no, cause confusion? No. 
That's that's been happening that's for been, a while. Yeah, that's been a lot. There's been a lot of that. Who was the first one? Um, I don't know. Because like Doom's the first big one that pops to mind. Yeah, they they weren't the first though, because this has been a thing for longer than that. Mm-hmm. Either way, fuck it. It's an awful trend. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. That's all we've got. Um, Why do we even have, have numbers? Got... If you're not going to oh, yeah. use them, if you're just going to repeat Hitman 1, 2, and 3 infinitely, why do we even count? Just every new Halo game is called Halo. Done. Hell yeah. Let's yeah. play Halo, boy. Halo 2020, All Halo right. 2021. Got my Halo on my Game Boy Pocket here. Let's go. Oh, you're playing on the 360. <laughs> Wait, which version? No, I'm playing 2015B. Oh, you're not playing 2015B? Like, let's just, let's use version numbers. Like, cut out the middleman. Give me code names and build IDs. That's awful. If you're going to be lazy, go full lazy. Ah, anyway. No half uh, anyone have anything else that would like to get out there before we uh, do the rundown? I got nothing. Uh, if you have Xbox Game Pass, check out Carrion. Uh, you're already paying five bucks a month. It's a reverse horror game, Metroidvania, and it's a lot of fun. You can kill people and eat them. Yeah, the water levels are trash. Water yeah. levels are trash. All right. So, so we're gonna do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Um, let's do the rundown, and then we're going back to top plays. So, we got a Twitter. We do our top plays there. We do some updates on the team there. We're starting to do some other social stuff there. Just check it out. Seventy-two PC underscore official. You'll get all sorts of updates. It's a good spot. Um, you're watching us live on Twitch. Thank you. Uh, but if you miss it or you want some smaller clips, uh, you can hop over to YouTube, 72 Pin Connector, and we have small clips from the podcast. We have some top play montage. We have the full podcast in case you miss one. So jump on over there. It's all good. If you're over there, you already know about that stuff. You might not know every Saturday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific time, we run a live podcast on our Twitch, twitch.tv slash 72 Pin Connector. You can jump in the chat. You might hear us interacting with them every once in a while. You can also jump in and snipe the games and play with us while we're podcasting. Kind of a fun thing to do. If you don't want to see these ugly mugs, lucky for you, you can pick up our podcast in any distributed platform, Stitcher, iTunes, any of that fun stuff. And then finally, I just said a lot of shit. You don't want to remember all that. Just go to 72 penconnectorcom and get whatever the fuck you want because it's all there. Um, that said, do you boys got anything Let's- else you want to add? Water levels Nothing are here. trash. Fuck water levels. Let's roll uh, the top place. <laughs> In that case, let's roll that beautiful footage. See everybody. Bye.